Hello guys and welcome to Steve Knows. Today I want to cover the latest virtual reality hardware showcase from Pimax and touch on another Oculus leak. It seems the Pimax Frontier reveal is just too good to be true. It has everything that you can imagine crammed into this headset and for a price that I actually think is reasonable, although it is expensive, it's just when you're comparing it to other offerings, other competitors, it's pretty special. This headset has everything that you could want in a device, so let's get started. But first, I know what you're thinking, Steve, why are you dressed like a dad? I've been at work, all right, guys? Let's get started, just let's go. So in the showcase, they started off talking about the history of virtual reality. Then they went on to talk about what was VR 1.0, what was VR 2.0, and then what is VR 3.0, which is what they were going to show us during this event. So I'm gonna go over some of the topics that they showed and some of the amazing features that are going to be within this headset. So starting off with optics, it contains a new bionic lens system that allows for an even bigger FOV, providing 200 degrees field of view, which is nearing the human capacity of 220. It has a vertical FOV of 135, which is also the limit of the human eye apparently. So it should no longer seem that you're looking through a letterbox like in some VR headsets. They've also improved the overlap experience Experienced when in VR headsets. So when you change your focus, your depth, when you're looking things up close or things far away, but especially up close, things can get a little wonky and overlap. So they have achieved this with a compound lens, which is mixed Fresnel and a spherical lens properties, meaning they're gonna have a better sweet spot, less glare, less God rays that you get with a spherical lenses. But they're not going to be as heavy and better quality than the Fresnel lenses. It's a happy medium rather than the best of the best, better than both, because it still has some discrepancies. It's like a nice, a nice middle ground. Some concerns for Pimaxonians or <laughs> Pimaxians. <laughs> They've often said that they experienced distortion due to the very, very wide field of view. So they have been working on some software solutions and created an algorithm that is going to reduce the distortion experienced at the edge of your field of view. So it should be much more immersive. And you guys know this, a feature that makes Steve so, so happy is auto IPD adjustment. And why is it that you don't need to manually adjust the IPD? Because it has eye tracking, but I'll get onto that in a bit. A huge part of a virtual reality headset is the display. And now the display on this is a 12K display with a PPI of 1200 pixels with a density of 35, which is comparable to the recent Aero announcement from Vario. That is an impressive screen. Goodbye to that screen door and hello, beautiful crisp visuals. The display panel itself though, is not being held back because it's not an LCD panel, which you often see which provide better image quality or OLED if you want better colors. They've gone for a QLED display. And if you've ever seen a TV that's QLED, the color is just draw dropping. So they've got a Q dot layer and a mini LED to back it. So it has a much faster response time, better energy efficiency, and they light up individually. So it allows the black levels. And the refresh rates of this display is incredible. I'm not sure we can even hit it unless we're playing a game like Beat Saber on a 3090 with DLSS enabled, because this can hit 200 Hertz. But they did say if you're going to max out the frame rate, you're going to suffer with resolution and field of view to cater for that, which is understandable because that's, that's a crazy refresh rate. So we did just mention about the auto IPD adjustment and that is possible due to eye tracking. And this headset's going to contain Toby technology, just like in the Vive headset. It's going to be in the Pimax now. The eye tracking technology can allow for much better performance when it's enabling things such as dynamic foveated rendering, which reduces the image quality where you're not looking. And it now knows where you are looking because it can track your eyes. So the headset does contain two cameras inside of it, for this eye tracking feature. It also contains inside out tracking now with four built in cameras that are looking at the environment so it can track the controllers in front of you with the light ring that it's got around it. It's also got hand tracking features so you don't have to use any remotes at all. It's got two more cameras as well for facial expression tracking and three more cameras for full body tracking and lip tracking built right into the headset which is just insane. Of course, this has to be tested, but from the videos that they've showed off, it would be more than enough for standard use in games such as VR chat to make it even more immersive, have that presence or kicking somebody in Blade and Sorcery. I just think it's incredible to have this all in one device. 
This headset even has modular features, so you can enable steam tracking using lighthouses if you swap one of the face covers out and put it onto the headset, and that's compatible with 1.0 and 2.0 lighthousing. Or there's more, you can swap out another cover for a mixed reality plate that will allow for augmented reality features. It has two cameras on the front that just like look out into the world in front of you. Or a 5G plate so you can connect to the headset using mobile data for to a Cloud XR platform, meaning you can use this headset anywhere with the, oh my God, it's so good. And anywhere you say, Steve, I thought this is a PC VR headset. Well, yes, it is. But this headset also offers a hybrid system that they call the Omni all in one, which means you can use your headset as a wired VR experience, or you can use this headset as a standalone device where it has a computing unit, an XR2 chip built right into the headset which has Wi-Fi 6E support, which actually uses the new six gigahertz band, meaning higher bandwidth and reduced latency and less interference. Or you can connect via a fiber optic cable directly into the PC for native PC VR. It even seems that the headset, when it's in standalone mode, will even support split rendering, which they didn't go into much detail about. It just said this on the diagram that they showed off. But what this means is the processing workload can be sent to another device, which would be the headset, for crunching some calculations. So for example, a wireless PC VR experience and the standalone headset would work together and the PC would push some of the calculations required to the headset for rendering to reduce the workload on the PC and improve performance and speeding up the overall delivery. So the experience, the user experience will be the best it can be. That's just a high level overview, but it's some pretty amazing tech to optimize our experience. And I know Valve are doing this as well. We've seen it in some Valve patterns. They are taking this a step further as well with a Gig module that operates at 60 gigahertz. So you can enjoy localized, low latency data transfer for wireless PC VR in the best way possible. I know Vive offer this as well, but Pimax are also offering this, and it seems to be a much easier, easier module to use. The headset design is the classic V that lights up blue. It has built-in speakers, two ringed controllers, noise canceling microphones, a magnetic facial insert, and a big cushion on the head strap, and a counterweight, which is actually the headset battery, which is a 6,000 milliamp battery. The headset will also allow for third-party modules, such as uh, additional cooling fans, blood oxygen monitors, and and centimeters, which I did think the US banned. So you may not be able to get that in the US. I could be wrong. I swear they banned it. They are even offering something called a Pimax VR station, which contains the Ygig module. So you can have an extremely fast wireless experience. But it's like this standalone unit, this standalone portable computer that you can put your own virtual reality games on your game library and then take it to a friend's house and play wirelessly with the standalone Pimax device and this wireless unit, which is acting like a router slash gaming PC. It's just nuts. It's seriously insane that you can take this thing on the go. This would be incredibly helpful if I was like going around a friend's house who doesn't have a gaming PC, perhaps I'm going to a conference, perhaps I'm going away and I'm staying in a hotel and I can enjoy some incredible PC VR that I can just stick in my backpack. Doesn't that just sound nuts? This headset just has absolutely everything you can think of all in one headset. It's amazing. And they're offering all of this for $2,400. But of course, the additional things like the module face plates and that Pimax gaming unit, they're all separate. You have to buy that separately, but I don't know the price of that just yet. But for the headset itself, $2,400, when comparing it to the $2,000 Aero, it seems like a bargain. But they are offering something kind of crazy that we've not seen in the VR space yet. And if you own a Pimax, Max headset before the shipping date of your 12k order, they will actually refund you or deduct the full purchase price of the headset that you just bought for the 12k QLED headset. It does make me wonder, why are they doing that? Are they being nice or are they being shady? But this is why I think it's too good to be true because everything just sounds incredible. But we do know, if at least if you've had a Pimax, you do know that the Pimax experience is not always the best. But let me know if you're interested in this headset. I just, my jaw's hitting the floor. I can't believe it. And it makes me incredibly excited for the Oculus event and for Valve's release. And speaking of Oculus, we've got even more leaks. This time, it looks like we've got maps of the Oculus Pro controllers, the left and right controllers, the dock, and the headset itself all flattened out. And it gives us more information on the device, such as this time, this one's white. But the videos we saw in the previous leaks, they were black. 
Are we getting a black version and a white version? Is the black for professional enterprise use? Is the white one going to be for consumers like me and you that we can game on? In the images here, we can see an Oculus logo on the front of the glossy casing, and that logo looks like it could be illuminated, which would be pretty cool. I hope it's illuminated to let you know that the headset is on, that it's active, it will look so cool. The lenses also look like they're a different shape to what's in the Quest 2. It's hard to tell in this image, but they just don't seem the same shape or as large as they previously did. So maybe they've got a new lens design that is smaller in form factor, more lightweight, but will offer us similar or better specs. This is all speculation, that is pun intended. I mean, we've only got tomorrow to find out as well what is actually going on, because I need it. I want it all. My bank is going to be hurting. So that's it for me today, guys. Thanks for joining me, and I am so pumped for this journey. VR is so exciting right now. Please give me a like and a sub for the road to 100k and hopefully I will catch you next time. Happy gaming guys. Good day.